slide. So okay, so this is a uh, um, work for generating and also examples for generative uh, networks. So the high level idea of this work is to control the um, use adversarial examples to control the latent space so that it will generate uh, adversarial uh, uh, results based on the based on the adversarial target. Um, the high level, like first we will introduce what's generative models. Actually, it is good that this work combines these two uh, concepts of adversarial examples and general. Uh, generative models together because a lot of people uh, complained before that when they are doing focusing on research of adversarial generative networks, uh, but uh, when they review papers, a lot of people sent assigned adversarial example papers to them. So usually um, people mix up these two concepts and uh, want to uh, clarify here uh, that these are very two different uh, concepts and here uh, is trying to generate adversarial examples targeting on those generative models. So in in, you, uh, in a normal like generative model, uh, there are multiple components. For example, the first can be an encoder, which actually maps the high dimensional input into a low dimensional latent uh, latent representation space for the data. And then there will be a part for decoder, which uh, maps the low dimensional uh, latent space to, uh, to the original high dimensional reconstruction of the image or any uh, data domain. So the latent space here is an internal representation of the data, as shown in the figure that uh, we have the encoder and decoder here. So such generative models can be uh, applied to multiple domains. For example, one uh, interesting or useful application is uh, data compression, uh, where you, if you have a large amount high dimensional data, then you can compress it to a low dimensional data representation, and then uh, you can dec uh, uh, decompose it or reconstruct it uh, when necessary. However, uh, with such a uh, wide application for generative models, uh, there will be high incentives for adversaries in real world to attack such models and make use of them. For example, in the figure, we can see that if we have, a, say, a digit seven, and when we compress them into a latent space, uh, the attacker can generate a little bit uh, adversarial in, uh, perturbation uh, to the input, for example, adding to the digit seven. And then after that, uh, during uh, the decompression process, it can be uh, reconstructed as the adversarial target eight. So formally, we can uh, view the whole process uh, simply as uh, two equations here. First is the um, generative model where uh, the X is the original uh, input and you can do the uh, encode and decode. And this whole process, we can view it as a gen uh, G target, which is a, a generative model process. And then by uh, constructing such adversarial examples, we can solve an optimization problem, uh, which is we want to minimize the distance between our original instance X and the adversarial input X star, uh, such that uh, the oracle can mis uh, or fool or misclassified or misinterpret the reconstructed instance as a uh, also a target, which is uh, yt here, which is different with the ground truth. Uh, and the distance, the L distance function here can be arbitrary distance function. For example, mo uh, most uh, generally people will use uh, LP norm as a distance, but in general people know LP norm is not a very good uh, measurement matrix. So uh, currently people uh, have different, say, uh, TV loss, which is more, which will help to generate more realistic uh, uh, instances in terms of image domain. And also we have different, like the variance total difference to like, instead of perturb the pixel, we can manipulate the pixel position uh, for the image so that it will generate more realistic also, uh, examples. So uh, as a brief um, process, there is a whole uh, process we, uh, what we can see that the first uh, we can uh, synthesize some adversarial input X and then it will uh, be sent to the encoder. And after the encoder, it will uh, generate some, uh, be mapped to some latent space. And after the latent space, uh, the decoder will generate some generated output and this whole process uh, is how we can attack the uh, VE gain based model where the discriminator at the end will help to distinguish the instance. 
so that it will still be mm, like uh, still be uh, benign to human uh, perception, but it will be uh, reconstructed as the adversarial target. And here is uh, when we want to manipulate or control the latent space, as an adversary or attacker, what they can do is train another classifier based on the latent space so that you can perform all types of traditional uh, adversarial attack methods to the uh, latent space trained um, classifier, for example, fast gradient sign optimization based attack. And therefore, uh, we can generate perturbation into the latent space and control it as well to generate adversarial instances. So here is some uh, examples. Uh, for example, in the face, if we don't have any adversarial behaviors, the face uh, uh, reconstruction uh, looks fine. However, if we add just uh, a, lot, a little bit of perturbation into the original instance, uh, the inst uh, all the like the face can be targeted, mapped to a target person, uh, as shown here. And also, if uh, we have digit image, we can on the uh, in the first row it's uh, original mm, normal reconstruction. But on the second row, if we add a little bit perturbation to the original digit, they can all be attacked to the target, which is zero here. And there is uh, some other example for uh, uh, SVHN, which we also have the zero, zero as a target. And in the second row, we can see all the different digits uh, can also be attacked to the target zero. So based on all this, we can see that uh, we, it is uh, very easy and possible to generate adversarial examples for generative models. And uh, what's next uh, I want to add is, uh, uh, not only we can attack such generative models, but also we can also leverage the generative models to generate such adversarial examples, which is like we can attack it, we can use it to attack other classifiers. For example, here is uh, uh, similar, like if we are familiar with uh, generative adversarial networks, we know there will be a generator G and a discriminator D uh, where the generator G take a random, uh, random noise as an input and then it will generate something uh, which will send to the discriminator, the D on the right, and the discriminator will try to distinguish if the instance is coming from the generator or from the real data input so that by this iteration, the whole uh, again, our whole network will help to generate something very realistic to approx approximate the real data distribution. However, here, by uh, leveraging such a uh, GAN network to generate adversarial examples, we can add another component to the original GAN framework, which is on the, the app here. If we, can do, if we want to do a white box attack, we can see uh, we still uh, input uh, the original in instance to the generator, and then the generator will help to generate some perturbation, which is called G of X here. And then this whole instance will be sent to a discriminator, and the discriminator will try and help to try to distinguish if this new instance is um, uh, similar with the normal instance, for example, uh, digit one or not. And then the second loss on the F here will be a ADV loss, which will maximize the misclassification rate for the targeted classifier, for example. It can be other uh, arbitrary machine learning models. So we can see uh, the whole loss function will be three loss uh, added together, like the ADV loss, which guarantee to uh, fool some uh, classifier or uh, some machine learning models. And the gain loss is trying to make sure the instance is uh, uh, close to the original input, and the hinge loss is trying to help to uh, bind the perturbation you add. And the gain loss here is the main component where why we leverage the gain model to generate it, which we hope to uh, uh, guarantee that the generate uh, adversarial instance still be as close as possible with the original instance. So by leveraging this method, we can see uh, some examples on ImageNet. Uh, on the uh, left, col uh, left column, it's original instance, and on the right column, it's um, a generated adversarial instance by this uh, GAN-based uh, technique. And even uh, with very close uh, look, we can't distinguish or we can't see any perturbation from here because it's um, basically uh, uh, approximates the original data's distribution and trying to um, simulate the real uh, data. And uh, therefore, this method can help to generate more realistic instances or adversarial examples. Mm, 
So basically, this are uh, intro, uh, introducing how we can actually can attack uh, generative models, and in particularly how we can uh, leverage the generative adversarial network to generate such adversarial examples uh, in real world. Mm, let me see. Yeah. So that's uh, work. Uh, if there are uh, any questions.